What is up, guys? So you're thinking about collecting vintage guitars. start what do you buy what's your budget before we get into all that though uh, if you haven't subscribed yet I implore you to do so that would be dope it would help it would help me it would help me buy more vintage guitars and eat food maybe uh, although I'm not counting on that now I'm fine don't worry but uh you know it just helps me make more videos and uh you know do projects like this so uh but i appreciate you guys tuning in if you like what i'm doing here it does help the channel grow so if you subscribe sweet if not that's fine you can check me out uh over on instagram too i post a little short reels and stuff and i'm on tiktok as well i'll link that down below and then um really what would be amazing is if you uh, hit me up over on Spotify listen to my music that's why I do this I like I like making music so helps me get my music out there and uh, yeah I appreciate you guys for tuning in anyway back to the regularly tuned programming so where do you start with buying vintage guitars I mean I think Something that definitely has to be considered is what is your budget? Can you afford to buy the $20,000 uh, 1963 Strat? Is that on your radar? Do you even like Strats, you know? Um, or do you have a smaller budget? Are you gonna build this collection over time? What is your goal with the, um, the collection you're building? Remember, these things don't have to necessarily happen in a year you know if you buy one guitar a year for 10 years you're gonna have 10 guitars so you can be a little strategic um, and maybe thinking about okay what can I buy that I know will go up in value this year maybe I'll flip it next year and buy two more guitars um, with that money and then buy a third guitar with money from your job or whatever so then you know instead of getting one guitar a year you're trading your way up and getting three and then that grows exponentially over time if you play your cards right so being strategic about your budget, where you're putting your money, how you can flip your way up, those are all things to think about, you know, because guitars can appreciate over time. Um, they can also lose a lot of value over time too. So, and it just depends on what you buy, what you're looking for when you buy it. And then also one thing to consider is reverb once they're cut, if you're gonna sell there. So, you know, maybe dealing locally. Uh, these are all things to consider with trading your way up. But beyond that, <clears throat> I think something important to think about is what do you even like? Are you a Fender guy? Are you a Gibson guy? Not everybody can afford a quarter of a million dollar Gibson. So if you like Gibson, maybe considering 70s Gibson. I think uh, a lot of people like to discredit guitars built in the 70s from both Fender and Gibson. A lot of the things that I seem to hear about these guitars, oh, the, the loot on the neck is, you know, at, like if you've been on YouTube for more than a minute, you've probably seen Uncle Larry and he hates the volute on the neck, but the guitar he's owned the longest has a volute on the neck. I love 70s guitars. I love the volute also. That's a personal preference for me. And uh, the reason I like it is because I've 
snap to headstock, you know? So anything that will strengthen that, I'll take a volute on the neck. I think it's cool. I think anything that's going to make the guitar last longer is great. So I like no complaints from me. Like I can be rough on my guitars. I know that. So I'll take a <laughs> like and and I'll get a better deal for it too. Actually, let me show you guys. This guitar is really interesting to me. Uh, I don't think a lot of people really know how cool 70s SGs. I mean, people think they're weird. People think they're shitty. I understand why, but I I think this guitar is cool. It's a 72, and it's. <laughs> and it's got the Les Paul pickguard. That's freaking cool. That's weird. You really don't see that. And I know a lot of people like the 62 and whatever, but uh, I don't know, this guitar is special to me and I like that big honkin' volute. I think it's cool. I want my guitar to, uh, I mean, this thing I could throw across the room and it's gonna be fine. And I kinda like the dot inlays, you know, the Gibson embossed, uh, the Gibson embossed pickup is very cool to me. That's, that's different. That's, that's sweet. And uh, I don't know, I got it for 800 bucks too. So it's like, if you're willing to go for the 70s stuff, you know, you're gonna get a better deal, you know? I've definitely seen 70s Les Pauls for 2,500 bucks all day. And you might, like with those mini humbuckers too, I don't have one yet, but that's, that's a cool guitar. And that's a good deal for a less, a vintage Les Paul. Um, you know, you can also get a Black Beauty from the 70s for 5,000 bucks. You know, that's a lot better than 70,000. <laughs> so, I mean, maybe thinking outside of the box, you know. And if you're not um, into American guitars, maybe you're into Italian or Japanese. I really love Japanese guitars. Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute, though. Play this acoustic at the beginning. It is a lawsuit era Ibanez based on a Guild D40 and I love this guitar. It's awesome. Uh, yeah, that's all I have to say about it. I think the Japanese made stuff is the best stuff out there for the money and Ibanez is no exception. Ibanez makes a great guitar, and they still do. To, to, to today, they make an amazing guitar. I don't have a modern Ibanez, but the 70s stuff, I have been, I've been after the 70s stuff for a decade now, so I have a bunch of 70s stuff is what I like, personally. I do have some 60s uh, here and there, stuff that is you know, not outrageously expensive. Um, you know, Stratertelli is on my radar, but you know, I I like oddball stuff and um, I like good deals. So that's something to look out for. You know, I got this for 250 bucks. It plays just like a Guild too, which is incredible because a vintage Guild might be 2,500. Um, and this is just a tenth of the price for the essentially the same guitar. Honestly, this might be have better craftsmanship ship than the Guild. And uh, that was a big problem for these companies in the 70s. They didn't want to have to compete the Japanese manufacturers over the same designs because they were just doing it so much better. And it's really incredible uh, when you pick up these instruments and you see for yourself how good they are, especially if they're set up well and they're well maintained. They just, they sound amazing. So I would definitely recommend that to anyone. Uh, same line of thought for the Japanese stuff and kind of oddball stuff. Uh, I love Epiphones and the 60s Epiphones before Gibson bought them are amazing. This is a 70s though and they're, sl they're slept on. They truly are. Um, this was my main acoustic guitar for eight years when I was learning and uh, now I just have it as a uh, Nashville high strum. <laughs> It's a cool thing to just have in the studio, you know? But um, they're really good. They're probably my favorite guitar 
you're like just these 70s epiphones are great I've owned I had a Crestwood for a long time I should have never sold it who knows what I was trying to buy <laughs> to uh, sell that one um, and I had a few others as well and they're just they're really cool underrated instruments and for the price I, honestly I think I probably sold the uh, Crestwood because I got it for like a hundred bucks and it was a quick turnaround so it was just a cool thing to uh, kind of play for a while flip get my money back buy something better so I'm sure that's probably what I did um, also one thing I want to talk about is the lesser known of American made Fender stuff that a lot of people just don't really think about. 1972 Fender Music Master Bass and uh, wow I mean I have a jazz bass back there you can probably see it um, this is just really special short scale it's basically a Mustang bass but with a single and this pickup is very cool and I just it was one of those instruments I picked up at a guitar store and was like it just felt right I couldn't put it down so <laughs> I actually uh, that day I had bought my SG that I had shown you guys and I couldn't stop thinking about this bass so I came back the next day and I had to get this one too same they're both the same year so it was a good year for me in 1972 <laughs> um, but you know this is something that people don't really think about is the music master bass uh, everybody wants a Mustang, but this is just as good. The pickup configuration is different, and you know I don't have the competition stripe paint job, but that's okay. It gets it gets the job done. It's essentially the same bass, and it plays just as good. So and it sounds great. So these are really slept on instruments for me. Is just thinking about how you can maximize your money to get the best instrument you can afford I think you know this was probably 900 or something like that um, really cheap for a vintage base and uh, for the quality it delivers it's really underrated um, you know saves saved me 2,000 bucks and I essentially got a Mustang base so you know something that I had been lusting after for years and years and years and uh you know this was a good alternative in my price range so looking for alternatives that maybe meet the need that you have uh, meet the need that you have without breaking the bank is super important so I would definitely recommend that to anybody who is you know just getting in the game of vintage guitars um, and just considering you know like you know and just considering what are you looking for what meets your needs are you an acoustic guy are you an electric uh, do you like slide guitars are you a bass player um, maybe you're a jack of all trades like me so you want a little bit of everything and that's fine too I mean so just thinking about how you're going to um, represent your collection you know I know there's a lot of collectors out there that they only play Gibson they only play Fender they only play PRS and that's fine to me that's a little boring I want one of everything um, and I don't discriminate against new guitars either I mean those are my American Deluxe brother and sister Telly and Strat I got them brand new and 2010 and uh, they're great I mean they play phenomenally so I can't complain about new guitars either um now strats I am a strat guy I love strats I have a 1979 Antigua strat it's actually in the case so I'm, I'm not gonna pull that one out it's in storage I have a bunch of guitars in storage so I can't just uh, grab them as easily um, and a few of those are vintage some of those are new uh, some of those are just really cool guitars some of them I just don't have space for I do love that guitar and I put that one in the closet just because it's in mint condition and uh, you know when you buy something player grade I, I keep a lot of my player grade guitars out so that I can play them and the collector's stuff I keep put away so kind of thinking about how how often do you play uh, are you looking for guitars 
that you play? Are you a player? Or are you just collecting? And you maybe have one or two guitars that you play and you keep those out and just perspective on that, you know? Or do you not give a shit? You're gonna buy a collector grade guitar and you're gonna play it because, you know, this guitar should be played and that's cool too. And I've honestly, I've spent a lot of time playing that Antigua Strat. Um, but right now it just does not fit what I'm doing. So I put it up just so that I have a little more space in my studio. I was getting a little crowded because I had like 40 guitars and <laughs> just walls of amps and uh, this small room. And so I just wanted to make a little more space so I could be more comfortable and relaxed in the studio and also I, I bought this drum set I wanted to set up I wanted to get playing drums again when I lived in Nashville my drum set was stolen so which was a heartbreak because I had spent like six grand on that drum set and it's gone but uh you know I got this little pearl kit that's just getting me started back into it I honestly I probably spent more on heads than the drums themselves so I mean, but that makes all the difference if you're into drums. That's another, that's another video though. So maybe I'll make that video uh, soon. We can talk about drums. That'd be cool. Anyway, so back to it uh, with refins, player grade, repairs. That's something you have to consider in your budget. Are you going to pay for repairs? Uh, a refinished guitar does not have the resale value of a mint condition guitar. So what is your intent? Are you going to flip this guitar? You know, just being really careful about how much you pay for things so that uh, you don't screw yourself over in the future. Um, but player grade guitars can be very cool. I have one to show you guys. It's actually one of my all time favorite guitars. It's a 1974 Strat might be earlier than that to be honest um it was dakota red and i stupidly in high school uh stripped the finish and so i had it natural for a lot of years and then um i went shell pink with it uh probably two or three years ago when i was living in nashville i'd just gotten sick of um the unfinished <laughs> guitar it just made me mad that i had stripped that dakota red so i was like well i'll do something and then i don't know i it would be worth a professional refin i've thought about just you know buying all the parts and restoring it but these pickups sound amazing i don't know who made this super strat but the 80s were a wild time i wish they hadn't done that because now you see these 70s strats are starting to go up to 10 grand uh, I think I paid 1500 for this one uh, way back, way back when I got it. And uh, it's crazy to see them start to go that high. Uh, which begs the next question, you know, now that people are getting priced out of 60s guitars, 70s are next, and they're going through the roof. People want these old guitars. So what do we consider vintage? I mean, will we see 80s guitars start to become vintage? I think so. And uh, my point to prove with that is I think 90s Les Pauls are already there. They are vintage and they play like a vintage guitar and they are, in some ways, they're, they're the fucking poor man's vintage guitar. Uh, not that they're cheap by any means, but um, especially now. This is my 97 Les Paul Classic. Uh, I believe it's a classic, yeah it is. This fucking guitar is sick and it plays amazing. I fucking love this guitar. Um, <laughs> it's, it feels like a vintage guitar. It's aged really nicely over the past nearly 30 years. It's almost 30 years old. So I just, I think it's a matter of time until we see the 80s guitars start to become un unattainable, like the 70s guitars and the 60s guitars, and 
people will want quality vintage guitars. And I think the craftsmanship ship that we had, craftsmanship that we had in, uh, in the 90s was unrivaled, to be honest. So we should embrace it. And I just, I think these are an excellent solution to, you know, maybe not wanting to spend 10 grand uh, on a guitar. I think I paid $1,600 for this guitar. So it's one of the more expensive guitars in my collection. Um, I also have a 90s White Falcon, which if you know anything about Gretsch, in the 90s, a lot of that stuff was made in Japan, and now uh, mine's in '93. So uh, same, mine's in '93. So same year I was born, 30 years old, and um, <laughs> that also plays like a vintage guitar, and it's you know starting to yellow and look like a vintage guitar. So is this one, and. Uh, I think we'll see a very interesting thing with those gre those 90s Japanese Gretches as they become vintage. They're gonna be a fucking sick guitar to have. So if you have one, I would say hold on to it because uh, I would rather have that 90s White Falcon than a brand new White Falcon. Um, and I don't know if they're still making them in Japan. Uh, I know a lot of the stuff is Korean. I actually have a Chinese Gretsch now, um, which I'm gonna make a video about. That's a whole nother thing. I mean, I think China might be the next Japan. They're making good guitars. Actually, actually good guitars. Like, um, incredible, to be honest. <sighs> I know, it's weird for you guys to hear me not talk shit in a video, but... These are guitars that I actually like. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm not the hugest uh, Rickenbacker fan. I'm not the hugest fan of fucking goofy ass guitar pedals. But vintage guitars, I fucking love. I love vintage guitars. And I, I like deals. And I like uh, getting a good deal. So, <laughs> I know, it's fucking weird to hear me not talk shit in a video that not all of the guitars do I love love but which actually would be the next point that uh, I'm getting to uh, I'll show you a guitar I love the design of this guitar I think it's a cool guitar but it's uh, it's missing a little something I think there's a lot of hype around these guitars because of the Jack Whiteification the Dan Arbackification of guitars um, unfortunately some of the like weirder cheaper American made guitars get a lot of hype they're not that great and uh, <laughs> Especially the 60s stuff, the Sears and Roebuck shit, and the Montgomery Ward shit is a little overhyped. It's not that good. It's fun, though. It's cool. They got interesting pickups. Um, and actually, you saw this guitar in the video already, so you know it does sound good. Honestly, it does sound good. Um, it just has, you know, I don't want to change the tuning heads on that guitar so if this fucking guitar wasn't all original and i could mod it out it would have the potential to be a great guitar it probably needs a refret i hate these tiny frets are fucking terrible um the wiring that they did on these guitars is so cheap i mean they just went out the front <laughs> From the switch, I mean, and you can feel the metal is super cheap. It never stays in tune. It's an American-made guitar, though, 1969. It looks cool, and it sounds cool. Uh, I could use a better bridge. These guitars are a great opportunity for somebody who's uh, interested in modding guitars. There's this uh, guy on... Instagram who mods old K's and turns them into like uh, Mandicellos 
Baxendall Conversions is his uh, his Instagram. And I'll try and link it down below so you can check him out. He does really cool shit. And I think that's something that is uh, an option for these old uh, Ks and harmonies and shit like that. Um, and something to look out for, to be honest. I would do that to this guitar, but I have a feeling that uh, this one is in mint-ish. I mean, all original condition, I wouldn't say it's mint. It's definitely not fucking mint. But it's in original condition. And it's in good condition for its age. It's in 1969. So I think just keeping it with the original parts might go a long way to a collector who maybe one day I'll sell it and uh, put the money towards something else. But uh, for now, it's in my collection, and I love it. Uh, it's cool. So, and something to consider is not everybody has the same taste or budget. You might like Tysco guitars. You might like Harmonies and Ks and Nationals, Supros, and these cheaper stuff. And so maybe you just collect that. There's a lot of amazing collections that are just these shitty old brands i i know there's collectors out there who only collect tyscos and that's cool they made cool guitars i used to have a tysco bass uh somebody stole it and pawned it though <laughs> so my friend um which maybe i'll actually make a video about him uh that could be a good video idea his uncle was the, uh, you might know him as the uh, drummer of Red Hot Chili Peppers, first drummer, Jack Irons. Um, he was, he was in my band, uh, which is interesting. Um, but yeah, considering, you know, maybe you want a guitar that's a project that you can, you know, rebuild. Uh, maybe you don't care if it's player grade. You can get some better deals. Um, maybe going for 80s guitars in anticipation of their price going up. I think, you know, predicting trends is part of the vintage guitar market and world. At something that I've done continuously is predict trends. I've been buying 70s guitars for years. Everybody said, they're so shitty, don't buy those and now they're going crazy in value and uh you know i just bought them because i thought they were cool and i wanted a vintage guitar but could never afford the highest end stuff and honestly yeah i could probably sell all my guitars and buy one vintage strat but then i wouldn't uh have all these options to inspire me to write cool songs and shit so maybe just your intentions maybe you're a one guitar guy and you only need one guitar and that's fine too i've honestly spent a lot of time thinking about uh what if i were moved a little lighter in the world um I'm sure a lot of you guys are listening to Keith over at 5 Watt World and, you know, he preaches some of the stuff that I've been thinking for a long time, but I just, I'm not there yet. I can't sell everything and go down to like one really good guitar, especially when even if I did that, things like my Strat. I would never sell because it has um, sentimental value even the epiphone you know it's not really worth any money but those two guitars are the guitars that I learned how to play on so it would be hard for me to get rid of those whereas this I mean for the right offer I'd probably take it <laughs> um, and you know beyond predicting trends I think Making your own trends and playing what you like is important. So you don't have to like what I like. You don't even have to like vintage guitars. Just go fucking play. Alright.